What's going on, people? Sammy Joe making videos about Xbox Series X prototype sent directly from Microsoft. This is so, it's not, it's a computer that I built uh, in a case that looks like an Xbox Series X case. Isn't that right, Morty? Isn't that right? Well, we've got the little doggy here. We've got the PC I built. It's running Gears of War 5. The target is 4K gaming, next generation gaming in a tiny form factor. Let's see if I can make the job happen. Let's see if I can do it. So queue up for an intro, and then we're gonna build this Xbox. We're gonna put the video games in the slot. Woo! Woo! Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Hard. You gotta be pumped on that, right, Will? Computer parts! Woo! Oh yeah. What's going on people? It's Timmy Joe making videos about building Xboxes, Series Xs, all up on the internets. I assume you just saw a little intro of me, but I've got a lot to do here today, so I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of talking. We'll just say that Xbox is new ones coming out soon, and the design on the Xbox Series X looks a little divisive. In fact, uh, I believe it will be the deciding factor on a lot of people's purchase between the PS5 and the Xbox. Uh, I don't, you know, they're both gonna have similar hardware. Why would I buy a big giant cube thing uh, when I could buy a regular old console? Now, we don't know what the PS5 is gonna look like. There's some weird renders of that too, but at least it's gonna be a normal fit under your TV kind of size. So this Xbox Steely uh, all stems from when they kind of did this teaser and showed this render or whatever, what might be the final hardware for the Xbox. I saw a uh, PC Master Race official or something on Instagram or maybe on Twitter uh, post, hey, Xbox, you did this now. Well, PCs did it 10 years ago or eight years ago because it's supposed to look a hell of a lot like this Silverstone case. Interestingly enough, the differences would be probably a little bit smaller. This is a fairly large, but still small for a PC case, ITX form factor case. But uh, we have a slot for the uh, you know media, the CD or the Blu-ray or whatever. It's on the opposite side. And then instead of a Silverstone logo, there's, or you know, Corsair badging and i5 badging, there is uh, an Xbox button or something up there. So uh, when I saw this comparison, I thought, I'm gonna get my hands on that case. What case is that? Did some Googling, found out it is the Silverstone FT03ITX, which was a case from 2012. Uh, if you Google it, you can find Linus building in one at NCIX with a GTX 670 or something like that. Uh, you know, because actually we have some limitations on the types of cars we can fit in here. And I'll kind of go over that now. So, yes, we're building an Xbox Series X prototype with PC parts. I have Ryzen stuff. The new uh, Xbox will have Zen 2 cores in it. We'll have some sort of Navi-based RDNA GPU. So, here it is. And we'll build it all up. And then uh, we'll put a couple games on it. And we'll see how it handles what, uh, you know, should be next generation specs. Uh, now, direct comparison, not exactly because there is a system on a chip being built from, you know, AMD to fit inside a small form factor. Everything is on one dealy. But real quick, they're supposed to have eight Zen 2 cores, which I don't exactly believe for the price that this thing's going to have to be under $500. You're not going to have an eight core CPU and a 12 teraflop GPU in this thing and all kinds of stuff. There's going to be, like, those have to be some inflated specs but you know something similar so i'd imagine they're gonna have probably eight zen threads not cores but i wound up getting a 3600 just because heck it's the best deal on cpus out there and it will fit the bill for the type of you know ipc performance we should see from this machine um yeah and then uh instead of you know a system on a chip i can't do that i do have well a radeon 5600 xt and you might say that's not no well, well, it is, but this is what the cooler is supposed to look like. Thanks to Gigabyte for sending me the uh, gaming OC, um, whatever this is, 5600 XT. But it wouldn't fit in this case. Not a lot. There's not a lot of room in this case. So I had to get creative and I was going to buy, there was a power color version of the 5600 XT that might have fit in this thing. But uh, I just wound up Jimmy rigging, Timmy rigging it. Timmy rigging it like I always do. I found an Accelero and then I found some fans that were slim enough that from this, if you remember this guy, another bit of Timmy rigging, um, I found and put the fans in there and it all works. 
and the GPU stays pretty frosty at like 60 to 70 degrees. I'm a little worried about the memory on this thing once I get it in here because I don't have any direct memory cooling, just whatever these little fans can blow through and they're going to be pretty tight in this case. It's going to be interesting, but ITX Aorus motherboard, we got eight gigs of DDR4. Um, I'd imagine that, well, there's supposed to be 16 gigs uh, on the uh, Xbox Series X, but it, that'll be total system memory split between the GPU and the CPU. We're gonna have probably a couple more cores or some, some horsepower here, but there is six gigs of DDR6 on here. So combining the two will get us somewhere close to the spec on the Xbox. We're not going for science here. We're gonna test some games on this thing once it gets done. We're gonna try and play them at 4K and see what we can do, maybe some upscaling and stuff. See if we can get some decent performance and what would be generally a better look than the current Xbox you know, uh, you know the, the Pro or whatever. I don't even know what it's called. I do not play with consoles, <laughs> except for the Nintendo Switch. So we've got everything on the table. I've been testing. I uh, spent the night last night, not even filming this, I should have, but Jimmy rigging this thing to get it as small as possible. That's done. I have all the parts. I have an SFX power supply from FSP. They're Dagger Pro, it's a 650 watt power supply. Should be more than enough. I bought the case on eBay, and guess how much I paid for this? eight year old case, $250. That's how much it cost me to get this to my door from some guy in the United States that's had a computer in it for probably six or eight years. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit of a sucker, but hopefully you hit the like, subscribe button, do all that YouTube crap, watch through the whole video, watch me build this up and do the things because hopefully I can make my money back on this. Maybe you could head over to patreon.com slash Timmy Joe and uh, throw me some uh, dough that way. But uh, there's a lot to do here, I might take the little Xbox symbol out of this seen better days wired Xbox controller and try and put it on here and uh, make it a little bit more official for the thumbnail. A lot to do, let's get going. I'm gonna build me an Xbox Series X. So here it is. This is the PC. You know what? I thought it was going to be a little harder uh, to build this thing, but um, maybe a little worried about temperatures and stuff like that. Pretty small case, but there's still uh, quite a bit of room for what I'm doing because uh, I don't need any SATA uh, power connectors or SATA cables coming off the motherboard. We're using one 512 NVMe drive. That's going to be plenty for this. You could, uh, there are, you know, holders and stuff like that for hard drives in this case, but you know what? Technology's gotten to a point where we don't need them. We have one 8 pin on the uh, the graphics card, one 8 pin on the uh, motherboard, and a 24 pin, and that's everything to hook up except for, well, I guess we have to connect the front panel buttons. Still haven't done that yet. Been doing a little bit of cleaning. There was some uh, weird LED strips in this case that were all gross and not working, so I just took them out of there, and the, the, of course the goo from the, the adhesives just on everything. Uh, but uh, there was this Silverstone fan, and I'm gonna replace that with a Noctua fan, a Chromax black one, just so we can get the max airflow, and we're gonna probably set that so that uh, it works with the CPU cooler. CPU cooler, as you can see, I'm using an old FX, or possibly even Phenom, CPU cooler, love AMD and their ability to use old coolers like this. Uh, I'm using it because it is maybe two or three millimeters higher than the Wraith Stealth, but it has copper and four heat pipes. Smaller fan, but I'm thinking it will actually provide better cooling. It seems like there's enough room in there for the PSU, that like it's gonna have a fan that's intaking right above it, but there's uh, at least an inch and a half between them and there's some, you know, there's, there's some room in there as you can see up here, right? There we go. Put the, uh, anyways, we're going to put that in there. And then all we have to do is uh, tie down some cables, button everything back up. Uh, one fan on the bottom, and this thing should be rocking and rolling. Got all those old gross case badges off this thing. Uh, we're going to see if we can't put an Xbox logo on the front of it for the thumbnail. Should be a good time. So just keep working, I guess.
Okay, so she's up and working Xbox Series X prototype, and I know it's not a real Xbox. I know that this isn't really an apples to apples comparison. This is kind of just me making a video. I'm not an expert on consoles, but I, you know, whatever. So it's, uh, you know, pretty close. Got six cores, 12 threads in this thing. I believe the, you know, next Xbox will have eight threads without any sort of SMT. It's gonna have, uh, you know, obviously a lot lower overhead and uh, better optimizations, but the hardware we chose here is, you know, pretty close. I actually put 16 gigs of RAM in here because, uh, this 260, uh, 266 kit of memory. wasn't sure if there was issues with it, but um, uh, what, what, I, I just put some RAM I knew worked in there. So we got RAM I knew worked in there, and I've made some optimizations. If we head over here, we see I have the GPU underclocked, and uh, we've got the temperatures well under control. It's been running for a couple minutes here. Unigen's not exactly the hardcorest of uh, you know loads to put on the GPU. Metro Exodus, where Time Spy was getting that memory temperature way up there. So we had to do some modifications to this, to the case, to everything. So I got my Xbox Series X, uh, you know, version of Forza Horizon 4. We'll play that a little later. Um, and then we Xbox controller, just, you know, for whatever. But if we open this up, we see the GPU is in a terrible spot because it's right on this panel that you probably wouldn't want to perforate to allow air to go through. If it was on the back side, that would make a hell of a lot more sense. I think it would make way more sense to have this kind of flipped around so that the, uh, yeah, everything's going to be poking out the bottom there and the air will blow out the bottom. I, I, I don't know if I could make a better design on this. It's, it's a weird design and it's pretty old and I doubt it was designed to have any sort of powerful GPU in there. But we got the 5600, ouch, in there with the Accelero on it and I had to even make further modifications to it. I made little plates that, uh, with some thermal pads kind of uh, allow the memory to you know, uh, expel some heat into some metal and hopefully the fans get a little bit more air in there because there's a millimeter or two of clearance pushing, you know, so you're basically just blowing the hot air around. But I went even further than that and uh, if we open this up, you see I put this channel, get that off of there, this channel of cardboard in there uh, that actually makes it so that the 140 mil fan there, it gets uh, some about a third of its air pointing up and blasting past the, the graphics card and the channels on the heatsink are a perfect design for that. So we get a little bit more airflow in there because I was cooking the memory on this thing. The GPU temperatures were never really an issue, but the memory was getting up near 100 degrees without doing some of these modifications. And then even more so, I had to go into, you know, uh, MSI Afterburner and underclock the card. We've got it undervolted to 850 millivolts. We've got uh, power limit down 50%. And then uh, this would be normally uh, higher at 1750 or 1780 while I lowered it to 1700. And then we have the memory running at its pre BIOS change uh, spec of 1500. Uh, and when you dial all that in, the temperatures seem to stay in check even, you know, a little bit longer gaming sessions and some harder to run games that are really, you know, hammering that memory like Metro Exodus and uh, like Red Dead Redemption and uh, I was running some Time Spy stress tests. I was getting pretty high memory temperatures now. They never go past like 85 degrees, which is pretty good with this case, you know, closed. So I think I've got it all sorted out. So um, I played some, some games on it. Here, I'll throw it to myself talking over some benchmarks and then we'll come back for a little conclusion on my Xbox project. Was it worth it? I don't know. Okay, so we've got a couple of console type games here. Starting off with Gears of War 5, Microsoft's own, which will almost definitely end up, uh, you know, being on the console. And you see it's running beautifully. 4K medium quality settings, no trickery, showing that the 5600 should be, uh, you know, pretty good companion for the next gen console, you know, just to kind of show that the horsepower is there and optimization only makes us even better. So now we've got Forza Horizon 4 and uh, again, medium quality settings. And I uh, see the top right there, 70, 80 FPS. And uh, you know what? You could even bump this up to probably high with the optimizations the console is going to bring. It, it does it beautifully. Then we see Fortnite requires a little bit more, you know, trickery, but epic draw distance and high medium uh, quality settings. We can play 4K all day long here. I'm even about to snipe someone right in the noggin. So boom, 
showing that the 5600 can do it. But it starts to run into trouble with Metro Exodus. Here's 1440p, high quality settings with Radeon image sharpening on just to try and help out. But, uh, you know, this is the kind of game that's going to put uh, 5600 down to its knees. Uh, that and this next game, of course, got to do Red Dead Redemption 2. And uh, we're barely able to stay above the 60 frames a second with a mix of high and medium quality settings. Uh, a 2K with Radeon image sharpening. This is a notoriously hard game to run, but on a console, it's going to be better optimized. And this next gen seven nanometer system on a chip for the Xbox and PS4 should probably be able to run things a lot better than the current Xbox One X and PS4 Pro. So let's throw it over to me and play the games. Ooh, we got bad guys. Let's play some Xbox, blow that thing up. Oh yeah, we blew that up, great. This is running at 4K medium settings. What are you doing, robot butt, getting in my way? Shoot these guys, shoot them good. I haven't played Gears of War in a while, uh, especially not with a controller, so this is just really annoying to deal with here. Shoot that barrel. Oh yeah, we blew up that barrel, good. Ah, uh, more bad guys are coming. Switch the gun. So yeah, we've got the Xbox Series X going here and I'm clearly shooting a big giant guy in the face. So it's working, it's, it's really working. And we're at 4K medium settings and uh, keep in mind, this is not an apples to apples comparison by any means. There is a lot of uh, overhead missing from a console that you know there, there is uh, on a Windows PC and uh, optimizations that are done specifically for the console. I think the 5600 is a pretty good GPU to be putting in here to kind of match the uh, what the Air Xbox Series X should have. As far as the uh, CPU, this is a six core. They're gonna do an eight core, probably without any sort of SMT. You're gonna be a lot faster than those Jaguar cores that are in the current gen Xbox. So that should be pretty cool. But um, I mean, it was just a fun experiment to try and get uh, you know a high-end GPU in this thing and <laughs> that's not supposed to fit. And me like, you know, kind of Jimmy rigging, Timmy rigging things to get it to work. But uh, all in all, I think it was a positive experience. It was fun, but um, I think I'm, I'm kind of done with it. <laughs> I think we killed everybody. Jump, J can you jump over that thing. There we go. Yeah, we killed everybody. Good. So this has been the Xbox Series X prototype, but really it's an I ITX PC that I made and uh, I might use it in my living room. Well, no, I'm not going to because I got a PC down there that's about equivalent to as powerful as this thing. I'm going to be, because uh, I just got this nice 75 inch 4K TV uh, on Black Friday. I want to get a 1080 Ti in this thing. So we saw I just got a 1080 Ti. We're going to be building a whole new computer for this multimedia center. But as far as a console goes, there she goes. That's an Xbox Series X prototype that I built myself. And we did things like completely finagle the GPU and it was a fun video. What did you think? I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter and uh, where are the dogs? Kim, here you. Oh, Frisk gets here and he's gonna say, have a good video, have a good video. Where's the other dog? Come here. <laughs> say goodbye, it's Xbox Series X, Timmy Joe. Subscribe to me on the Instagram and the Twitters. See you guys in another video. <gasps>